Shadows started showing up everywhere. It was sudden and odd. It was kind of cute. You didn't know exactly what you felt, but you didn't mind. At first, it just shows up at the library after class to study, even though you suspected that it didn't really need to go over any of the information. It sat away from you, but only a table away. After a week, he suddenly asked to sit at your table. May I sit here today? His voice was soft as his hand rested on the back of the chair in front of you. He sputtered, your head moving up and down in an odd. I, I mean, yeah, but there are other tables available today. It's nicer to study with someone. You watched as he set his stuff down and said nothing. It continued like that for a few days, until exam weeks passed, and you didn't see much of him at all. You were too busy that week to question why you felt a tint of loneliness wherever you sit down to review your notes. Sure, you had some acquaintances in your classes, people you liked a little more than everyone else, but to say you had friends at school must have been a lie. That's why you mused. It's not like I like total rigor or anything. I'm just lonely. For some reason, you didn't like that reasoning at all. After exam, you didn't really expect to see him around as much, seeing as there wasn't much rhyme or reason to see someone you shared no class with. But as always, the man surprised you with his antics. You had stayed at the main building until nightfall, training your quirk and working at it on. By the time, you were making your way back to the door. It was already alarmingly close to curfew. Listener, you spun around, surprised to see Shoto standing behind you. Oh, Todoroki. You smiled at him, waiting for him to catch up to you. I didn't expect to see anyone else out so late. He shook his head. Me neither. He looked at you, his mismatched eye boring into your soul, sending a shiver down your spine. What are you doing at so late? Training. Ah. Oh. The two of you walked in silence, your steps sinking with one another's. Normally, you hated when silence surrounded you, but for some reason, you didn't mind it tonight. Content with walking in the comfort of world this night, you rolled your shoulder back and relaxed. Looking straight ahead, you didn't notice the way Shadow kept his eyes on you. May I have your number? This question stopped you right in your track. You hand frozen over the help bar of the, the dorm doors. P pardon? Shadow seemed shy. The bashful look on his face was foreign to you, who had only seen his stoic expression thus so far. I seem to like spending time with you. You are... He looked away. You're not like everyone else. Everyone seemed to only want to be around me for my looks or even my father. You blinked. A few seconds passed before a smile cracked your future. <laughs> You're saying I'm not like the other girl, Shadow? <laughs> you cracked at your joke, shoulder shaking as you threw your head back. Guess you can say I'm quirky then, huh? <laughs> Shadow looked mildly confused at your humor. He thought stuck on the title nickname you seemed to give him. I would say so, yes. He laughed only got worse there. He simply watched as you bite your lip in an attempt to muffle your amusement, feeling miserably when your light laugh filled the once empty hair. He found himself smiling along with you as he leaned against the door. Seeing you standing there, under the dim, flickering light above the entrance, head turned back as a lot of crazy entire being should have found himself relaxing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You whipped a tear out of you under your eyes. That wasn't even that funny. Huh, could fool me. Shaking your head, you grinned at him. Holding your head out, you waited patiently. Shoto stared at it for a second, before taking it on his own and shaking your head. You snorted, covering your mouth to stop yourself from laughing like a hyena again. <coughs> your phone, Todoroki. You said softly. 
the slide lead into your voice, making him uncharismatically flush. R right, I knew that. The slight stutter in his words makes you giggle as he handed you his cell phone. Quickly entering in your information, you smile at him. Giving him his phone back, you move to plush and get the floor, the door. He watched you enter and moving from his spot. When you realized he wasn't following you, you looked at him over your shoulder. You were raising inside in question. Snapping out of his reverie, he cleared his throat and stepped past the door. Relishing in the warmth of the bolding giving. Good night, Todoroki. Good night, listener. You made your way to the elevator, pressing the up symbol. You hung, bouncing on the ball of your feet as you waited for the lift to descend. Chadu looked down at his phone, his cheeks growing warm at the sight of the contact you had given yourself. Listener, with a heart. The binge of the elevator made him look up. Catching your eyes as you stepped inside, waving at him once again, you laugh. Your eyes stayed connected until the elevator door closed. Shadow stared at the closed metal doors for another second before looking back at the device in his hand. When had it frozen his phone? Todoroki Shadow was a man of few words. His story of Liu's nature had brought upon several rumors around his name. Some believed that he was the dark gritty type, the type of guy who never revealed his thought to anyone, no matter who it was. Some believed that he was simply shy, perhaps the tsundere type of guy who rejected his thought on feelings. Some just thought he was a flippant, arrogant man who was brought up spoiled. Despite how different some of the rumors were, there was one constant. Todoroki Shoto did not express his feeling, if he had any. And yet, here he was, sitting on a park bench, miles away from anyone he knew, sitting. His jaw was clenched, the squeak of his teeth grinding together only annoying him more. His whole body shook as he tried and failed to contain his anger, his fist shaking as he sighed. Shoda didn't allow himself to get trodden in the vexation of ten, but when he did, there was usually one cause. His father. The pro hero long ago succeeded in his goal, surpassing all might, and in turn he tried to fix whatever the mess that his family was. However, Shoda couldn't find it in himself to forgive him just because he was number one. The past together was too strong for him to make a man with his father. Earlier in the evening, the older Todoroki had asked him to meet with him. To meet with him. While Shoto initially rejected him, Henry was insistent in meeting with his son. The meeting spot was at some restaurant far away from UA. It had taken him a while to get there. And when he did, he was already annoyed. Dropping his surname to the hostess, he paid little attention to the way their eyes widened. Just this way, sir. He disgruntled. He followed her. Thought his face was as still as ever. He had kept his eyes on the ground, eyes tracing the intricate pattern in the carpet as he followed the hostess to the table. Only when she stopped did he look up. He froze. Only expected his father, he was shocked to see a woman at his side, dressed up entirely too much for his liking. He also didn't like the way she looked at him licking her lips as she sighed him up. Hi, she started. Her feather was making him wince. It's nice to meet you, Shadow. I'm... What is this, father? His voice were cold, and he could feel the room temperature changing as well. Shadow backed away, glowering at the other male. Don't tell me this is another... Don't tell me this is another one of your quirk marriage. I told you before, I will not park it in this. Shadow kept his word low, not wanting to make a scene in such a busy restaurant. Angie sighed, his forehead creasing as he furrowed his brow. The woman beside him pouted that showed a harsh word, shivering as she huddled closer to Angie. The sight disgusted Shadow immensely. 
an image of his mother flashing in his mind. Her quirk is manipulation, Shoto. She can make you. She can manipulate anyone to her will. Father! His voice rose, as did the room temperature. The sudden influx of warm replacing the just as sudden frigid coolness had gained the attention of a plethora of onlookers. I won't do this. His eyes darted to the woman. I won't marry her. Shoto. His, his father's words were harsh and reprimanding. You will not speak to Aoi like that. I don't care who she is. Shoto spat. I'm not marrying her. And she stood, his shadow easily overtaking Shoto. Giving his tall and white frame, Shoto kept his father's gaze intently, glaring at him with a much anger as he could muster into a single stare. Angie was searching for something in his mismatched eyes, and he didn't know what. It was getting more and more tense as the second passed. Who is it? His father's words were deep and rumbled within his chest. You keep saying you won't marry her. Not that you won't marry. Shoto halted. His arms sitting at his side. There's someone else, isn't there? Tell me, Shoto, who is it? Shoto knew his father wasn't asking for out of curiousness. The flame of rage burned behind Toko's eyes. He knew his father. If he wouldn't marry who Angie chose, then finding someone who Angie would approve of was impossible. He stood his ground. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that I refuse to take part in your shit any longer. I'm not some puppet you can order around. If I marry someone, I marry them because I love them, not because we have compatible quirks. Shoto turned and began to stand up. Before he could get every far, before he could get very far, his father large hand landed thoroughly on his shoulder, spinning him around. And the quirk was deactivated, revealing the dread scarred along his face. Shoto. He glowered. You will not speak to me like that. I'm your father. I don't care. He spat, wrenching himself up as Angie grasped. His skin felt freezing cold, and yet it burned uncomfortably at the same time. He breathed out the cool hair, making it visible as a crystal cloud slipped from his lips. I don't care. Leave me alone. And with that, he ran. He ignored the weird stare he got as he bought it from establishment and ran. He kept going, running and running and running. He ran until his legs started giving out beneath him and collapsed onto a park bench. And now he was here, alone, in a park he didn't recognize. The air was frigid and the bench beneath him started to freeze over. The wood underneath his finger had started to burn and flakes away, only to get frozen over immediately. Shoto? No, 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 no. He became paralyzed. Staring at the, at the hazy ground with wide eyes, he knew who stood before him without having to look. No. He thought, she can't, she can't see me like that. Shoto, are you okay? No, no, get away from him. Shoto? It'll hurt you. Get away, get away. Hey. You appeared in front of him. Your eyes glossed over with worry. Too close. Stay away. Get away. He didn't want to hurt you. Go, go, go. Your hand touched his shoulder. Any friends? Any friends side? The hooded board of the bench snapped in his hand, burning and fell to the ground as hash. Standing up, he backed away from you in a desperation you had never seen from him before. Falling over? S stay away. He gasped, his eyes unfocused. Your eyes narrowed, flitting over his flustered form. His shoulder rose and fell in an unceremonious fashion as he gasped to air. His cheeks flushed as he swallowed down an any oxygen he could. His eyes were wide, scared. Moving slowly, he knelt to the ground to be high level with him. Shoto. You tried. Your voice as gentle as you can make it pushing away the underlying panic that was behind in your throat. You had been in the area doing some last-minute grocery shopping, not expecting to see your friend having a breakdown on one of the benches. The two of you had gotten pretty much closer in the recent month, texting two and four, constantly and eating lunch together whenever you could. 
You'd be lying if you said you felt nothing for the boy. If anything, he took your heart with ease and now held it in his hand. I knew nothing of the fragile thing that was your feeling for him. Shut up. You inch closer, not wanting to alarm him. Hey, it's okay. No. His voice cracked as he yelled. Please, stay away from me. My quirk. Ignoring him completely, you closed the gap between the two of you and enveloped him in a hug. You felt him tense, a pause from the hug or breath he had been taking a moment ago. Rubbing his back, you hushed him. Not a word came from your mouth as you held him close, burying your face in his shoulder as he tightened your grip. Your gasp around his broad shoulder. He felt light. I thought, I thought he would simply float away if you let go. You held him closer. Please, you whispered. Your hot breath finding over the nape of his neck, making the air on his body stand. Please, let me be here for you. Slowly, he hollowed himself to sink into your arms, sink into the warmth of his presence. His eye fluttered closed as he lay against you, a shaky sigh releasing from his mouth. His quirk was still out of control, his breath freezing cold against your skin. Yet, his body was boiling hot. You paid no need to the change in temperature that was slowly overtaking you. His ink shadow out of his panic was the only thing on your mind. When you felt you had relaxed enough, you pulled away, not missing how we followed you slightly. You stared him into his eyes and shared tears glossing over his beautiful you. You don't have to tell me what happened, you said as you took his hand in your own. I won't force you, but but please let me stay with you. Should I stare that you would run eyes? Disbelief over his pain features. Why? He croaked. Why are you doing this? He only smiled, bringing his hand to your cheeks. His eyes only widened as you press, as you press his palm against your cheeks, pulling away. Oh, wait, my croak, I'll hurt you. You shook your head, bringing his hand back. His breath caught in, in his throat as he watched you. Your eyes were hiding from him. You were shivering from how cold it was, but you didn't let your discomfort show on your face. His hand was large in comparison to your face, and he grimaced. His hands were rough and calloused from years of training, not to mention you had pressed his left hand against your soft skin. Tears welled in his eyes as he tried to pull away. Please, he begged, his voice unrecognizable to his own ears. Please, I don't want to burn you. I don't want you to look like... He stopped, biting his lip. Knowing what he was going to say, you frowned. You heard Ash for the boy in front of you, only making you want to be there for him more. It's okay, you whispered, your voice breaking. You won't burn me. You pressed your cheeks against his warm palm again, tears dripping down your face, leaving the hot-headed thread in their wake. I trust you, Shadow. I've always trust you. I trust you. His quiet sobs filled the silent night here. You could have done nothing but hold him close to you. You sweat a strain with his tears. You felt pathetic, knowing that this hug was all you could do, all you could offer him. You finger trusting your girl on his back. It's going to be okay, you whispered. You don't know how long you stayed like that, on the cold ground together as he cried into your shoulder. His quirk was beginning to calm down, with the temperature rising to normal again and his body cooling down. His hands, the one you had been too scared to touch you with, gripped your sweater with such fervor they shook. Shoro? You tried, pulling away slightly to look at his face. He stared back at you and bashlessly. Eyes red and cheeks stained with tears trail. His hair was tousled, and his pod lip were shaped, and yet he still looked breathtaking. You shook your head. Now wasn't the time for this thought. I'm okay. He mumbled, his voice weak from crying. He stared you down, trying to decipher your thought. Thank you. 
Smiling, you held his face in your hand. It was nothing, Sho. I'd do anything for you, you know. Leaning forward, you pressed a soft kiss against his exposed forehead. When you pulled away, you were shocked at your forewarners, but you kept quiet. Shoro seemed to be as surprised as you by your action. His eyes and mouth rounded into circle. His cheeks pink. Fuck, he's cute. Breathing out, he pressed his forehead against yours. Thank you for trusting me. He took a second before leaning forward, until his lips brushed against your ear, making you shiver. You're an angel. N no, I love you. Fuck, I love you so much, it hurt. His confession left you breathless as he leaned back and smiled softly. Before you could string together a coherent response, he pulled you into your feet and took your hand in his. Come on. He mumbled, the tip of his ear going red. We should go back to the dorms. He pulled you along, his hand never leaving yours. You stared at you in trail as a finger with rounded eyes, your heart beating harshly against your ribs. Looking up from your heads, you stared at the back of his head. His red and white hair bounced with every step, looking incredibly soft, despite how messy it was. You took in a deep breath. You idiot. Should have paused looking at you over his shoulder. He inhaled sharply at the side of you. Your cheeks flushed. No. You grinned at him. <laughs> you idiot. You exclaimed, leaping into his arms. Effectively knocking the air out of his lung. You stupid idiot. You mumbled. Just a laugh holding you close. I know I'm an idiot. Idiot. You said again. No other word coming to your mouth. Pulling away, you forward you brought at him. You can't just confess to me like you're some main character in a romance novel like, like that and drag me home. Swallowing thickly, you held him closer, pressing your lips against his ear like he had done a second before. I love you too, idiot. I'm not a